Hey, I'm Eric, and I'm gonna show you a quick and easy way to use stock photos to add fire to your drawings. I actually use stock photography to create this fire effect that you see here. I don't know about you, but I actually don't really like drawing fire too often, and stock photography is one of those great ways to get it into your piece really quickly and then build on it. There are a lot of stock photography and resource sites that you can use. I'm using Pixabay. It happens to be one of my favorite ones. I really like it because it's royalty free. Generally, when you're looking for stock photos for fire, I recommend finding something that doesn't really touch the edges, something that kind of is isolated in the center. And this is only because when it's cut off on the edges, this makes the effect a little harder to deal with. Not impossible, but you can still probably get it a little easier if you find something that the fire is right in the center of the image. This also works really well if the background of the image is black, and that just has to do with the way we're going to do this. Here's one that I think will work really well. There's a lot of variation in the fire. It's on a black background and it's mostly isolated within the interior of the image. So anytime that you use stock photography, resources, just anything that you didn't make yourself, it's a good idea to go ahead and look at what the rules are <laughs> because if they don't allow you to use them in commercial settings or there are royalties involved, there may be money that you have to exchange before you can use the image. Pixabay allows you to use images royalty-free. They don't even ask that you credit them, but it's always a good idea to do it anyway. There is a way to donate to the authors that have made all of these resources available, and if you can, it's a good idea if you do it. All right, so now we have our stock photo in our drawing. So how do we make this look like it actually fits? The reason I said this is a little easier to do if it's on a black background or on a darker background is because of the way we're going to actually use Photoshop or any other tool to make this look like it actually fits into the image. And that's by using blend modes. In Photoshop, there are these little options that you have above the layer palette. And the one that we're going to use today is actually screen. And screen just drops off the black background. As you can see here, it now looks like the fire actually works on top of the image. The other thing that I said was to try to find something where the fire didn't touch the edges. And this is actually why. As you can see here, these little pieces of the fire are actually a little cut off and it's not a total problem. It's just that it's a little easier to work with when they're not. So here on the bottom, you can see that the part that's cut out, that's actually probably the logs that this fire was on top of in the original image. And it's easy to fix as long as there isn't a whole lot of it. So what we're gonna do first is just erase out the parts that just don't work quite right. So we're gonna erase out these harder edges down here and we'll erase these harder edges up here. All right, before I get too far with anything, I wanna go ahead and make sure I duplicate this layer just because we're gonna get a lot of mileage out of our stock image. So we don't wanna to do too many things that destroy the image before we can use it again. So I'll go ahead and make a copy of it and I'll just turn it off for now. Okay, so how do we get this to look like it's coming out of Bowser's mouth? What we're going to do is use transform tools in order to sort of manipulate and move the image around so that it does what we want to. Transform tools are Command or Alt, depending on whether or not you're on a Mac or a PC. I'm on a Mac, so it's Command T. You can use the shortcut or you can go up to Edit, Transform. And the first one we want to use is Scale, just because it's a little too big. So we're going to scale this down just a little bit and move it closer to the mouth. And I think also what I wanna do is kind of turn it to the side since we have a lot of it. And we'll just kind of place it here for now. Now, right now it's just sort of a block and we wanna make it look like it's actually spewing out of the mouth. We'll go back to transform. This time, what we wanna do is right click the transform tools and then go to warp. Now, warp is a really powerful tool because it just basically allows you to squeeze and squish something and maybe even balloon it out. So warp is gonna allow us to kind of push and pinch the image in the way that we want. And I can make it look like the fire is basically like a cone flying out of the mouth. All right, cool. So we have one side of that fire. Now the next thing I kind of want to do is I want to feather these edges that are on the side here because they kind of come to an abrupt end. In Photoshop, there's a tool that I call the finger tool just because the icon looks like a finger, but it's actually called the smudge tool. We'll go ahead and scale it up a little bit here so it's a little bit bigger and you can actually kind of smudge the image and I'll do this just on the edges here just so that it doesn't come to such an abrupt stop. One of the nice things about smudge is that it kind of distorts the image in this a little bit of a blurry way. It does try to maintain as much detail as possible so be careful with overusing it because you can kind of make it look 
overly blurry, but it is really nice in this since fire does actually kind of get a blurry effect as it moves away from the source. All right, great. Now we just need fire for the other side, and this is why I kept a copy of the original stock. So we'll make a new copy here. And we'll just do the same thing, but on the other side. I'm going to try to make it look a little different so it doesn't look like a mirror copy of each other. And I'll do that just by warping it a little differently than the other side was. And again, I'll just use smudge to sort of make the edges do a little of that flared out look. Okay, this is looking great. So one of the other things I like to do once I have the stock photos in and they're set up the way I want is I like to add a little bit of a glow. So if it's coming out of the center of Bowser's mouth, I would imagine that it's hotter and it looks more intense. So I'll just make a new layer above both those fire layers. I'm gonna set this to a new blend mode and I like using overlay. So let's take a very big airbrush. Let's get a very light yellow, pale, maybe even orange color and then just hit the center of that right there. And as you can see, it's kind of bringing some vibrancy to the fire. And I think maybe the edges, I'd like to make a little more red. You can go crazy with this too. Sometimes I like to add a little bit of purple to the edges there. And it just makes it a little more interesting. I actually use the same process for the lightning in the background. So I'll just find another image for lightning, same site, same place, Pixabay. I really like this particular one just because it's very intense and it has a lot of little spread out pieces here. We're going to do the same thing that we did with the fire. Let's go ahead and place it behind Bowser. Let's flip it. And like the fire, we'll go ahead and set this one to screen as well. This one has a little bit more brightness in the background, so we'll just use that big airbrush and just paint away or erase away the stuff that we don't want, and we don't want those hard edges. Maybe I'll just erase away just a little bit of the intensity here. There you go. That is a quick and easy way to add lightning or fire or any other light effects that you want to your artwork. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope it was useful. If you did like the video and you enjoyed these tutorials, I encourage you to join my Discord community. It's an awesome community. There's probably a couple thousand artists there that share their artwork and share resources, including how to do stuff like this. The link is in the description to this video. We hope to see you there. And we hope to see you on the next video.